They're sanctimonious to create a deal for themselves even better than any we could supply. I'm sure you heard a priest in the news who actually put out a murder contract on a boy to silence him about his molestation. Now, if it's been a drug lord trying to silence an underling, one might at least have understood the logic and honesty of evil. But this priest was trying so hard to preserve his own image of himself before his maker, the attempted murder. This is rather like a dung beetle fretting about his own hygiene. Sometimes I wonder if even my high art is wasted. With a man like this, even I would reach out to touch his hem. <laughs> These righteous ones are strange. They crawl to the slime, yet try to flap like angels. Their lives are split in earth and sky. They forget if God's forgiveness is taken for granted for injustice to one, then there's less incentive for avoiding others. The confessional is not a license to sin. Justice cannot wait to the last trump after a lifetime misery for the victim. It must be done now and seen to be done on earth. Justice cut away from heaven and must be done now, according to Caesar. Now, don't be so surprised. After all, what is a devil? Now, what is morality? It can use a weapon by us as the other side uses it against us. With regards to the hand that holds it, a bullet is still a bullet. Humans believe we're ignorant of morality, but they forget we were angels once. We understand morality as well as any of those dick spittles we left behind. We need to know it in order to corrupt it. Only those who know the full glory of light can cast the deepest shadows. To summarise, our task is not to kill faith or attack dogma, but to strengthen them. While with strong faith and dogma, the humans can go out and torture, burn, blow up, make war on, and murder each other with a clear and righteous conscience. Their concentration of the kettle is clear, clean concept, not deviated by informed analysis or wishy-washy revisionism. Faith must be the enemy of charity and murder it in the name of God.
after he had gathered his senses, Nicholas found himself on a ledge among the sun and clouds that billowed into unrecognizable and frightening shapes and clung to his face like wet fungi. They seemed to arrive their fetid filaments into his very soul to suck from him his newfound hope. He looked wildly around for the same post of succor but saw none. It was cold and the damp air whined like a lost soul in the shifting gloom. He could see no sign of the path. And though there were clouds, there was no sky beyond them, nor moon, nor stars, no friendly sun. It was a chasm of eternity of blackest black. There was no sense of up or down or along. Just nothingness in which this walled world seemed to float like a saucer. If this was limbo, it was a more terrible place than hell. For hell at least had heat and volcanic colours. But here there was nothing but a cold, desolate, amorphous greenness. Here was a tomb capable of holding corpses. Was this the way to the Great Fall? Littlest picked himself up and climbed painfully back to the walled world, but at the gate there was no sign. The only way now appeared to be along the outside of this grey, featureless fortress, which seemed to wind away forever into the monstrous shifting cloud. He felt cold, numb, and desperately alone. He felt sick with vertigo, and closing his eyes, felt along it blindly. Suddenly his hand felt a change in the wall's profile. He opened his eyes and saw a door not much higher than himself, set deep in it. Over the door was his grip from small persons only. His heart left with hope. He tried to open the door, but it was securely locked. He beat frantically against it, and his hands bled, but it remained shut fast. He felt he was lost forever in his abandoned guest enemy. He sank on his threshold, exhausted and full of despair. For the first time forever, a little devil wept. Suddenly it grew deathly cold, and the leaden clouds parted and curled along the ground. Between them, a lurid, bone-white light grew, and the little devil felt a great force coming towards him. He opened his eyes and saw a monstrous shape. It was covered from head to foot with a grey, chalmer-stained winding sheet. It seemed as if it had been once tall and powerful, but was now humped and twisted by disease. On his hooded head was a pitted and blackened crown, and set with blood-red stones. The head turned slowly and painfully this way and that like a blind man. Little devils knew he was smelling out his very soul. Then the leprous apparition stilled and seemed to look straight at him. It surveyed him for some moments, then the wall with a secret door. Even you, little one. Even you. Satan groped forward, ran his hand over the little devil, then the door, and found his description. So, it has come to this. It is you and I alone. I do not choose this burden to find justice. Yet he, in there, does not realize what he has done. The perfect comes before has so little knowledge of the perfect that comes after. How is it he is so blind we see so much horror? So much power and so little knowledge of the consequences. Yet I am the one who has cursed the evil of this world. Is that justice? Is it? Is it? Almighty! Hear me! You have not heard my voice since the fall of you strangled with ice. But I'll speak again. Hear me! My heart has been so scarred it scarcely beats. Yet even I have pity on this little one. Yes, even I. Yet you... You, who they call you great father, are not moved. Why? Why are there so many orphans? Why, when you heard the screams of the mothers of firstborn, you did nothing? Why? Why have you abandoned even your own sons and rats on the cross? Why? Why do you skulk in your golden palace and say nothing? Do nothing! Why? Are you ashamed? Why is it that even his tiny squeaks can summon the living corpse you see before you? You remain unseen, silent, and uncaring. Hear me! Listen to me! Is there no small, dusty corner of heaven where you could permit a nest for this little mouse? Tame and rest in peace. He's such a small one, and this is not a small door. 
Will you not open it? You would hardly make a draft. You, wallow in the golden sun of paradise, would not even notice it. It's so little to ask. Can you not grant even that? Why? Why? Satan bent down and picked up the sobbing imp. There, my imp. It is open. For a moment he held Littlest and kissed him tenderly on the head. Then he put him through the new open doorway. Go. Find happiness for both of us. All this while, Littlest had kept his eyes, blind upon the tears, tight shut against the horror. And suddenly he felt sunshine upon him, and the feeling of well-being returned. And over them, he found himself once more inside paradise. Yet one of this is so hectically beautiful that he caught his breath. The water of life cascaded with crystal fountains among the filigree scented trees hung with blossoms and put a baby in his chair. There were souls that burned again in the sick of time, doubt, pain, doubting of death, and sick to full, injured, screwed with demigods. Lovers, Parted by death, all requited love, and reunited, entwined in green fields. Their faces transfigured. Barry Woman her burly baby still burning life to the breasts. She will give a little gown of rose, and lullabies and lollipops. Souls, once abandoned by the fickle glancing eye of time, have become epitaphs of life. Others, seeing dear faces they had left behind long ago, laughed and wept in each other's arms. It is a place where things have come to rights, where dreams come true. Even the very flowers may music. Rooted to the spot, Lippers Devil felt as if someone had taken by his hand after a long journey and shown him his own soul sleeping like a child and said, You are home. <laughs>